I wanted to start off first of all by mentioning something that I noticed, you know, in my um, gallivanting around town and interacting with certain people who run things, certain people who are involved in certain scenes, certain people who put on events, certain people who may represent certain artists, certain people who are just movers and shakers in whatever industry they're in. And one thing I noticed a lot, especially in recent years, that's incredibly different to how it was when I was doing it, because, you know, when I was somewhat involved in a scene and also very visible um, and also very active, I generally didn't really let it define my personality. It wasn't something that I kind of wore um, like a medal. Right? I didn't wear like a hat. I didn't wear like a jacket. I didn't have like a, um, you know, um, what's, what's that Baptist church that had those signs about, you know, really homophobic slurs and what they put them in little billboards. I didn't do all that sort of stuff. I just kind of did my thing. And if you saw me around, then you kind of knew what I was about. But for the most part, I didn't really shout it from the rooftops, apart from when I promoted my stuff that I was doing on my own social media page. But for the most part, everyday life you wouldn't really know what I was getting up to right I just tried to kind of be about the work but nowadays I guess because things are mostly social in terms of promotion in terms of branding in terms of marketing it would seem like the people who are involved now who are doing the work who are kind of continuing on this lineage of putting on great events who are continuing this lineage of you know being creative and trying to add their little notch to the creative timeline of this city or this world that we're living in it seems like a lot of them are very hell-bent on making sure you know who they are or making sure that they walk around so that you think or you know that they're somewhat important it's a very strange and weird attitude but i have noticed it as l lately anyway and it's something that's been kind of bothering me a little bit because i never was like that and i'm really thinking maybe i missed a trick maybe i missed a trick not really being a bit up my own ass and actually believing no don't get me wrong i always believe that i'm the shit i always believe that i'm you know incredibly talented at what i do or i'm incredibly capable I always believed that I was somewhat special you know sometimes you got delusion in you and that's my always delusion I've always believed I was somewhat special so I've always believed that my success in whatever field that I do is somewhat inevitable it'll just be a far it'll just be a way more harder route to get to that level of success because for the most part well, for whatever reason my family and everything that we've kind of done everything has always come a bit hard to us it doesn't mean it's never happened but everything concerning my family my parents when they come to their career my brothers and what they got up to it's always come really really difficult it doesn't mean it never happens but it just has to we just have to kind of like claw away at it you know stomp our feet in the ground really hunker down for us to kind of get in level of success we don't usually get that beginner's luck or first time luck or someone brought you in it never happens like that for us and my family so i think that's something that's going to carry on with me so eventually i'll get to where i need to get to it's just going to take a bit longer than most people fine no problem but some people out there i feel like um have this really i think somewhat outsized ego given what they do and they really go out of their way to be like I wouldn't even say obstinate. I don't know what you know what the what the term is. I wouldn't say it's rude either because again I don't know these people, so I can't say it's rude because who knows how I'm coming across that's making them react the way that they're reacting, who are, which is uh, which is what I'm responding to. But there is a certain attitude that exists. It's, maybe it's here, maybe it's just in general in the kind of cultural malaise or cultural atmosphere out there of just having an ego that's way outside of what you're actually doing, and an ego that I think in comparison to other people who have achieved far more, doesn't make any sense. And the reason why I bring this up is because number one of Virgil Abloh, RIP to the GOAT, but the times that I met him, even when he was, I would say, when his personality wasn't as well refined as it was towards the end of his life, I feel like, you know, towards the end of his life, he, he came into his own and maybe was a bit more chill in general i don't know how to describe it but in the beginning when i first kind of met him in the middle beginning time stage he wasn't he didn't always come across the warmest let's just say that right but as he gained more success his personality became way more personable he became the every the every man right to everybody like everyone had a good experience uh, interaction with everyone had a good experience with him when they interacted with him he'd go out of his way to be extra kind he'd always stop for autographs and pictures and stuff he went out of his way to really sort of like um buck against a trend of people who have got big jobs or are really big wigs in the industry and also being up their own asses but i also noticed virgil Abloh aside that the higher up the person that you meet 
week. Like imagine if you you also meet like a Carl Lagerford, RIP the goat, or like somebody else like a Tom Ford or like a Mark Jacobs. Usually those people are always the safest. The actual people who are the creative minds behind these brands, the creative people behind these, you know, agencies and labels, wherever whoever these people may be, they're usually the nicest people. It's the ones below them who are the cunts. So it's the ones who are like the you know, the assistant to the guy, the I don't know, the receptionist to the office, to the studio, um, the area manager, whatever it may be, whatever level that's, uh, that exists below the seat, the, the kind of, the, the, seat, yeah, the founder, the kind of visionary, the brand or the agency or the studio, those are usually the cunts. And I never really understood it because for the most part, you're just working a job. So this sense of entitlement that you have about something like that it doesn't make any sense because you're just an employee. And also relax. But sometimes I think to myself, maybe I missed a trick. Maybe that's what I should have been doing when I was doing my thing. I should have had more of an outsized ego. And maybe with that outsized ego, people start to believe that you are who you think you are. And then that allows you to get certain opportunities or allows you to open certain doors or put in certain position. I don't really know. I'm not really too sure. That might be one of the things. But sometimes I always think about Virgil and I think to myself, but Virgil wasn't like that. Virgil was the head of fucking Louis Vuitton menswear, right? One of the very rare black fashion designers out there, heterosexual fashion designers, had his own label was doing all these other multitude of things had every industry connected he wanted under if he's you know in his flipping black book but he was still amazingly safe and then you got some of these other people that i bump into and see in certain places who are just i don't know you're doing your thing don't get me wrong congratulations and you're putting on a great service and people are enjoying what you're doing and you're providing people with a respite or you're providing good work or whatever you're doing but it's not really like that level. You know what I mean, it's not like um, as what would say as Kanye would say. It's not Ralph level, but yet you've got the ego of a Ralph level of a Ralph Lauren, which makes no sense. But Ralph Lauren's really nice, so it's really odd. But then today, I found this clip actually randomly as I was thinking about it. It's just weird how this happens, right? And this is courtesy of a website called David Bowie News, and I actually found this first of all via a tweet that someone posted out there about how David Bowie had a very interesting and somewhat enlightening perspective on life and everything and his celebrity and his stature and whatnot what he was coming up and I thought this story was incredibly funny and humorous but also spoke a lot to how I've been feeling about some people I've been interacting with and made me realize that actually the way people go on how they can sometimes be rude and sometimes be a bit obstinate and just be a little bit difficult to deal with because they're doing a certain thing that they think is giving them the reason to be a cunt is not really the normal way to go about things. And actually the great way to go about things is to maybe adopt a more David Bowie um, perspective or POV on life and how to kind of, how you see yourself and to kind of have some level of humility. And once I play this video, you'll kind of understand what I mean. But this is a really cool little video. And this is courtesy of an account called Adam Buxton and it's titled David Bowie, Ashes to Ashes, Clown Suit Story. Hope you guys enjoy. Cut. Okay, everybody, let's reset. David, you got a two-minute break. Tommy, let's get those girls in Hello, son. Don't suppose you got a spare Ziggy? Did you say a spare Ziggy? Yeah, you know, a smoke, a snout, a wibwob, a cigarette. Oh, right. Here you go. Much obliged. Uh, what was your name? Uh, Mike. Ah, Mike. Check the mic. Don't wreck the mic. Back off on the mic. Oh, where's that, where's that, where's that, where's that? So, here we are. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Bowie, what would you say was the biggest moment of your career? Oh, well, let me tell you about it, Mike. I had quite the attitude as a young pop star. Can I have tissues for my eyes, please? Yes, David. No, those are the wrong tissues. Oh, sorry, David. It's easy to get caught up in the hype. It changes you. So I was on the set of the music video for Ashes to Ashes. Do you know the one? Uh, yes, I do. Right, so we're on the beach, shooting the scene with a giant bulldozer. And over there, there's Steve Strange and various weirdos that we picked up at the Blitz Club in London the night before. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and David Mallet, the director, he's got the camera on a very long lens. And I'm dressed from head to toe in a clown suit. Why not? I hear playback and the music starts. So off I go. I start singing and walking. But as soon as I do, this old geezer with a dog walks right between me and the camera. Well, knowing this is going to take a while, I walk past the old guy and sit next to the camera in my full costume, waiting for him to pass. And as he's walking by the camera, David Mallet, pointing at me, says to him, Excuse me, sir, do you know who this is? The old guy looks at me from bottom to top, 
Now he looks back at David Mallet and says, Course I do. It's some cunt in a clown suit. That was a huge moment for me, Mike. It put me back in my place. It made me realise, yes, I am just a cunt in a clown suit. And basically, we're all cunts in clown suits, right? To some degree. And I guess in the grand scheme of things, nothing that we do is really that important. Nothing that we do kind of really should give you an excuse to be a dick to people or to be rude or to come across cold or whatever it may be, especially if they're there enjoying the thing that you do. Just a bizarre attitude to have. But in general, no one really deserves to have that kind of level of ego if somebody as talented and as um, ephemeral and as awe-inspiring and as legendary as David Bowie didn't have that level of ego. Then I don't think somebody doing the things that I see on a local scene, on a na nationwide scene, should have that level of ego either. If David Bowie can be chill and can somewhat have a little bit of humility and take that, you know, story you know not to be something that he can kind of negatively react to and take as a learning experience that i don't think anyone else has any excuse especially when you can consider the people like you know virgil abloh who i mentioned who was a supremely um kind and gentle person and went out of his way just to be cool despite having one of the well despite having every reason to be a cunt he went out of his way not to be one so that's basically what i've been thinking about during the weekend when i've interacted with certain folk